before, about five years ago, our skies were typically blue, and now you see it's covered with lines and haze. We, we began to eventually test to see if, if uh, in fact, there was credence to what we were seeing. In the, from the first test in uh, precipitation in spring of 06, that mm -hmm. tested seven parts per billion, uh, we've since had tests that have escalated as high as, high as 3,450 parts per billion. That's a 50,000% increase in aluminum. I sent this water, see it's right there, it says backyard rain gauge. Uh -huh. Aluminum, 1,010 micrograms per liter of aluminum. Mm -hmm. And here's barium, 8 micrograms per liter of barium. And this is from the labs up in Redding, California. This is a certified government report. And here's what normal is. I asked him what would be normal. Point five, five. Point five would be normal. For and aluminum? I, for aluminum. And the maximum allowed in drinking water, they said 50 micrograms per liter. And government action required at 1,000. Well, we're over 1,000. We're so far off the scales for uh, toxicity in aluminum that um, it, it appears to be affecting the, the flora uh, greatly. Our grass is about a third its height that it was only a few years ago. A 35-year forestry biologist um, has done 50 pH tests, the, the rain. Across the board, every single test was 10 times or more more alkaline than it should be. Even if you say, well, very poor stream, we might have gotten only 300. But even so, there's only 30 bugs here. And the same stream you're looking at, about 1,000, how many years ago were you finding? About uh, 20 years ago, this had about a thousand. If I could just clarify, so 10 megatons of aluminum dumped into the, the uh, atmosphere would have no human health impacts. So, so let me be more careful here. Work to separate out the toxicological. But so the aluminum we've only begun to research. This is a very delicate moment for the powers that be because they're taking a covered up operation like the tropospheric aerosol program or chemtrails, Project Akeras, whatever. It's had many names over the years. And they're making it over into a geoengineering scientific uh, shield to deflect sunlight because global warming's out of hand. I am a substitute teacher and I, so I get to work with a lot of kids. I get to see a lot of kids in this county. And what I noticed in the last two, three years I've been working with the kids is that our kids, our uh, majority of them have upper respiratory um, problems. I'd say two-thirds to three-fourths of the kids are hacking and coughing most of the school year. I've spoken with teachers who told me, I've, I've brought this attention to them, you know, have you seen these skies, you know, all your life? Some of them have lived up here all their lives. And they say that, yeah, their skies look different from when they grew up because it's a lot of times covered in this white, milky haze. But they also have told me that they notice the kids, that the, the attention deficit, the attention span of the kids, it's their lives as teachers have become so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, many times at night as the sun starts to set and there's uh, huge banks of this uh, aircraft disbursement, it, it literally looks like there's forest fires burning across the mountains because it's a very dirty color. It's not, uh, it's not a, a, a white cloud or a, a natural sunset by any means. It looks like there's some sort of massive industrial activity or forest fires burning over there. And we see that typically every night. When you get 50 fish and maybe only one or two got a bug inside them, normally the trout stomachs are crammed with food. There was mason jars and they were brand new, sterilized and that's what we catch the rain in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a HEPA filter that we tested the air with. Okay, so you caught rain and then you, you basically filtered air. Mm -hmm. What did you find? Aluminum and barium. We haven't done anything serious on aluminum and so there could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow we haven't looked at. You may remember the 8,000 dry lightning strikes that occurred in June of 2008. Yes. You may remember that. Again, my background, I've, I've done lightning suppression work for Bechtel Power, and I've done uh, work in some of the first solar plants in the continental U.S. Atmospheric conductivity 
in the lower 48, I have read a couple articles that's been measured at four times its historical conductivity. More atmospheric conductivity would logically mean more lightning. The, the strikes that we had that day, I spoke to dozens of 30-40 uh, year veteran firefighters and they've never seen anything like it. Atmospherically, they've never seen anything like it. And our skies were literally covered with aircraft trails the day that happened. But if you have a more conductive atmosphere, you're going to get more lightning. Whether people believe in chemtrails or not, the geoengineering should be scary enough. And when people learn about geoengineering, chemtrails will then become apparent because they're the same. This is from the snow surface at Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. 61,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum. This is just ordinary snow water. Mm -hmm. And people are drinking this stuff when they're hiking on the mountain. And remember, government action is required at 1,000. This is 61 times over the government limit, and our hikers are drinking this poisonous water on Mount Shasta Mountain oh itself. God. Strontium, 383. Barium strontium will take away from your bone structure, make for weak bone structure. Uh, the aluminum, though, that's scary. You know, what is it? Alzheimer's, autism, gosh knows what that's doing. A number of other things, neurological. We speak of these tests that contain massive amounts of heavy metals. Often, the first response from people is, well, they're migrating from China. But California Air Quality Resources Board did a study on the aerosols from China, and metals were not amongst those aerosols. Again, the geoengineering patents specifically describe a polymer fiber to keep those metallic particles aloft a little bit longer. So again, if you have the one of the most stringent air quality boards on the planet stating that these aerosols are not migrating from there, they weren't there five years ago, they're there in lethal quantities now. Where are they coming from? Is that where they're coming from? You know, these, these aircraft you see laying these, these trails down? Again, um, I, all I can say for sure is that the metals we're seeing match the patents exactly, and the patents match what we see above us exactly in, in the scope of creating artificial clouds. So we can only conclude this is the source of these metals. Maybe 6.8 if you look at the darkest little portions in there. But this is black oak leaf. This is black oak acorns. This should be very acid, and I'm getting 10 times higher than expected. And there's something really wrong here. Amphibians, uh, great decline. Uh, used to sound like the Ozarks here with the tree frogs, and they're... Uh there's a small, small fraction of what there was here in only four years. So there's something very wrong going on with the ecology around here. When you should be getting 5.5 and you're getting 6.8, there's something damn wrong. It's not just activists anymore. Now the scientific community that has their head on straight um, is speaking out. I would be willing to uh, more or less kill 18 Mississippians to save 1,800 New Orleanians. 